What's up guys, main man Sweet here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always. A lot of people have a lot of trouble with the Akuma matchup. Suddenly it feels like he's everywhere and he plays like a street fighter character. It's not too obvious how to counter him. He's jumping all over the place, he's shooting fireballs. It can be very awkward to fight Akuma. So I thought as I've brushed up my Akuma defense for the last few months, I do... He frustrates me much less these days, uh, even though he was so... He's still, you know, super strong, but I don't really mind the matchup that much anymore because um, of, uh, you know, I, I know some basic defense. So, uh, let's get into it. Um, a lot of the time you see stuff like this, jump back, hado, 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 while running free. In general, you know, just sidewalking is a really good idea versus uh, Akuma. I choose to sidewalk towards the left. I'm going to explain that in a bit. Uh, but in general, you know, a lot of Akumas like to do fireballs and while running free, just know that all of this is extremely steppable. We can just keep sidewalking. And I'm at the wall, and it still worked. Uh, so that's just one thing that's good to know. Um, the fireball also is minus 13. This means that you have to find the punish you have that hits the hardest here. And in season 3, a lot of characters have got received better 13 frame punishers. So, do find the best punish you have here. I opt for down 4 4 4 because down 3 has a lot of range. Akuma's lows, down 3 and down 4 have a lot of range. This has to be stressed. And we're gonna get into how that can change the punish a little bit. But so I go with my longest range 13 frame punish and that is down for 4-4. But as you can see, it just hits so far away that it can actually make it whiff. So, and this is the same with Akuma's uh, down 4, which is his knockdown low. This is launch punishable on block. Always punish this, guys. But if he does this from tip range, and this is where really godlike Akuma players, like the Pakistani Akumas, will place down three and down four at tip range, so that stuff like that happens. Uh, but uh, the Akumas you encounter in ranked won't be that smart. So down four, launch punish, down three into Hado, uh, 13 frames, uh, minus 13. So that's important. Um, and of course, uh, an important thing, uh, sorry, I'm gonna do that with the jump again. An important thing to note with down four is that it actually tracks really, really well to both sides. So as you can see, uh, while running free, no tracking, but if he runs into down four, down four that has a shitload of tracking, but he takes a huge risk, it only does 20 damage, doesn't get any incredible Oki afterwards. If you do block that down 4, you know, he basically dies. So that is how that is balanced, but do keep that in mind. Down 4 is pretty much a homing move. Um, and then, of course, uh, what really sets Akuma apart from the other, uh, from Tekken characters, I was gonna say the other characters, but yeah, this jump here. It can be so obnoxious. And you've seen people spam this shit. You know, demon flip, demon flip. Um, it's, uh, it is so annoying. I used to hate this. I would just block and like, oh god, what am I going to do? Oh. What you're supposed to do here is, uh, what we do in Street Fighter, actually. Find your anti-air. A lot of people recommended jabs. But I don't find that to work particularly well. It's not very consistent. And I see even tournament players try and jab and it sometimes just doesn't connect. So find your best anti-air. And in Street Fighter, usually it's the fierce standing kick or heavy high kick, what's it called? And that's actually the proper choice with Kazuya. He can, you know, it, it will always connect. He can't even jump over me. Even when he's vertically above me, it connects. It's super consistent. So, you know what? 
as soon as I see the demon flip, I just standing for it. He can't interrupt me. He can't interrupt me. On hit, it's of course a bit different. But still, it will beat out many options. Um, or will it still beat out most options? I know the throw is kind of fast. I'm gonna test that option. Uh, sorry. Okay, there we go, that should be the throw. No, I think the standing kick even beats the throw, to be honest. Um, but what I find to be the best option, because most Akumas won't use his homing move uh, out of... Uh, the good players use the homing move a lot, but a lot of people don't. As sidestepping is incredibly powerful versus Akuma's demon flip. You will quickly find yourself in his back. I would sidestep towards the left here because if you sidestep right, that you see the tracking on the four option. I'm at his back and it still connects. But this is on hit. On block, you can make it to his back. But again, I make it a habit to go left because even on hit, that, that four will never connect. And if you do this, you're, you're immediately in uh, Akuma's back and you can easily launch punish him. As soon as you see the demon flip, sidestep. You can go for standing four, but a lot of characters don't have a good anti-air, to be honest. Th these are Tekken characters. We were not constructed to deal with this. So again, sidestep is a really good option. You find yourself in, in his back and you can... Yeah, ma make him pay. Uh, I, I, I get frustrated seeing how many people are so weak in the Akuma matchup and no wonder we didn't used to see him now we see him a lot I used to suck at it I used to just block uh, block so dumb never stand there and take this like like this go with an anti-air or best option in my opinion just sidestep that shit you'll be at his side immediately and just punish him uh, very important you know he, he has changed, he changes Tekken, you know, whenever he is in a match. You, suddenly, you have to work with a vertical space. Uh, so that's important. Um, don't stand too close to Akuma. You don't want, it's a bit like Paul, whereas if Paul is in this range, he, he is one Paul, uh, he is Paul A. If Paul is here, he's Paul B, because this is where Demo Man hits that uh, uh, clean hit range. It, it just changes the character, and he has access to devastating throws. And with Akuma, he doesn't have devastating throws, but what he suddenly has is the scariest 50-50 in the game, with, uh, of course, down free Hado FADC into... He launches you if he has meter. And, of course, he has a wild standing too to give you a mid-mix-up. Um, so, if you can just stand a little bit away from him, uh, the down free Hado FADC is not a clean, uh, it's not a natural combo. So when Super Akuma said just backdash, bro, he do, he had there's a point there, you know, trying to stay away from a character, and you know at all cost, um, at any cost, stay away from walls. Just stay away from walls. There's not a single character in the game that is more lethal next to walls than Akuma. There's a reason all pro players want to fight Akuma in infinite stages. Don't let him get you to the wall. It's very important. And if you are at the wall, do anything you can to just... Uh, yeah, get away from there. Uh, when Akuma has uh, little, no meter... Try and pressure him a lot because he doesn't have access to crazy panic tools. So, uh, oh, oh, sorry. He does have this, and this is a pretty crazy panic tool. So sorry. You have to know what you're doing when you do this because th this is just like geese all down one. That's a counter hit launcher. 
But only with bar. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Only with bar. So, he won't be able to do super high damage. So yes, when he has no meter, try and pressure the character a lot. Try and pressure him a lot. Because as soon as he has meter, he has access to EX Ryukyan. Uh, down one suddenly converts into a combo. And it, it, it gets disgusting. So when he has no meter, he's a completely different character. Whereas Geese without meter still can do a lot. Akuma without meter, it's your turn, you know, try and pressure him. Um, but of course, uh, when he has meter, you know, and you, you're doing a combo like this. Ah, ha, 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 ah, ha, ha, ha. And, he, and then he tech rolls at the wall. Don't immediately go for pressure. Because when he has meter, he can at any time do the get off me. He extra you can. That renders him invincible from frame one. It's not a, it can interrupt your strings. My my Kazuya has a one, two, four. It can interrupt in between but with that. You can't really pressure Akma. Be very careful when he has uh, a bar. Especially at the wall when he's tech rolling and recovering from your combo. There's a good chance he might throw that to try and interrupt your next mix up so he doesn't have to guess. Um, so be very careful and try and bait it. You know, try and expect it when you've knocked him down. Run in and try and bait that extra you can. A careless um, Ashima player might throw that out. And when you have baited this, this, the damage on this is entirely in your favor. If he connects it, on counter hit it does like 40, on normal hit it does like 32 or something like that. But if you block this, wow, you have a million years before he recovers. So find your biggest punish. Uh, if your normal launchers don't do a lot of damage, see if your character has a delayed hop kick. You know, the whole neutral four. Does a lot, 25 damage it does on pretty much every character that has it. You can do it very easily here, just do it afterwards. No need to dash into it, just... And you get a very uh, decent combo. Uh, so yeah, do, do make sure to punish that properly. Um, and then a lot of uh, Akumas, you see them do this, you know, <laughs> look at me, I can power crush. Uh, this is seen very often. Do know that, most people know this, this power crush is a high. So if they go the whole thing, you can do that. But a really good thing that surprisingly few people know about is that his focus attack here, it is a power crush. And what is a hard counter on power crushes? Throws. If you throw someone who's doing a power crush, they can't break the throw. The throw becomes unbreakable on power crushes. And uh, do note uh, the John versus Super Akuma. You know, uh, John, expert at the uh, Akuma matchup. What he does with uh, Marduk is like, oh, I have a launching throw. Yeah, pretty absurd counter here to the focus attack. So, any throw you have that hits hard, run in on the Akuma who spams Power Crush, and it's suddenly unbreakable. Very good thing to have. Uh, and a lot of people also get this wrong. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna record both Tatsus. Both these Tatsus are launch punishable. So this is single, both are minus 50. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh. So that's a punish. That's a Calcius down for minus 15 frames. And now the longer one. Punish. So if you have a down for two, generic down for two launcher, that's 15 frames or a hop kick. Uh, make sure to launch both of the tosses. Oh my god, really? Finally. That wasn't a punish. Come on, do one manly punish. Oh 
Uh, that wasn't for punish. Ah, oh, whatever. It's the YouTube curse. If this was a real match, I'll, I'll land it every time. Uh, but yes, um, down for two, hop kick, go for it. Uh, and then um, we have down for one, one, down for one, two. This is a little bit harder. This is for a higher level of play, usually. But yes, this is a mid high or a mid mid mix up. So if someone's spamming the first extension, mid high, you can duck the second hit if you keep spamming that and then launching. If he does mid mid, it is minus 13, but you recover crouching. So most of you will get while standing 4 4, but if you happen to be a Kazuya player or a character with a 13 frame while standing launcher, you can launch it. But just ma make sure you do your, your biggest punish. Uh, so that is actually what I wanted to show in uh, this uh, quick guide here on how to beat Akuma. And these are the very basics of anti-Akuma. But honestly, if you get all of this under your belt, what I've shown you now, the, the matchup will drastically improve in your favor. Trust me, it will really make the Akuma opponent struggle. Um, so I really hope you all get into this because it will save you so much frustration when you play online. I used to hate this matchup and try and avoid it as much as I could. But then, eventually, I learned it uh, due to so many more Akumas these days. And uh, now the matchup is, uh, is kind of fun because I notice that my opponent starts to struggle and he has to think a little bit. He can't just do all of these classic flowcharts with the demon flip over and over and uh, down four spam and EX Shoryuken whenever he feels like it and power crush all day. So uh, I do hope all of this helped you guys. I hope it was enlightening and I hope you all have a lovely day. Take care.